Now, it's a shame that sometimes we have to do these types of things, that we have to, you know, sit down and have conversations about racism because literally in 2017, somebody found racism on a box of corn pops. So literally, you can find a racism anywhere if you decide to look. So cage side seats and other sites have decided, and other people have decided to turn the Apollo Crews new character into some type of racist uh, caricature. Here's what cage side seats had to say. Not minutes after Apollo Crews talked about being Nigerian, a, a cage side seat says it sure says something about WWE that when a wrestler of color embraces their heritage, they're the bad guy. Likely, there was a pretty big, well liked tweet. On Twitter that said, notice how WWE isn't doing the whole, quote, heel turn to embrace your culture theme with Drew McIntyre, a white man. He gets to be a face and embrace his Scottish culture. Jinder Mahal, Mustafa Ali, and Apollo Crews don't get to do that. For starters, I don't know what Mustafa Ali has to do with anything, and Mustafa Ali is American. Um, and his character, his heel turn had nothing to do with him being uh, Pakistani. I believe he's Pakistani. It had nothing to do with it. Um, but, you know, these are no doubt white people. Um so let's get let's get into this. Let's talk about this because there are some examples that we could talk about where you know, people quote unquote embracing their culture, being non-white men, and then being heels. There's four that are off the top of my head that I can thought of. Apollo Cruz is one, Jinder Mahal, Santos Escobar, and Roman Reigns. Right? Neither one of these men are white. All of them are talking about being, you know, our heels that represents a specific type of culture. You know, Roman Reigns is Samoan. Santos Escobar is Mexican, uh, Apollo Cruz is Nigerian, and Jinder Mahal is Indian. Now, all of these men uh, were not born, well, except Santos Escobar, who's literally born in Mexico. But Apollo Cruz was born in California. Roman Reigns was born also in California, I believe, or in Florida. And uh, Jinder Mahal was born in Canada. So they're representing their cultures via some other culture, some native culture. Um, so, but this stuff is not, it's, it's true to a degree, but it's also missing the secret ingredient of what makes these characters heels. It's not the fact that they're foreign. Apollo Crews is not a heel because he's Nigerian, right? He's a heel because he's an elitist. When you are looking at the world from through a specific type of lens, you know, you, you can't help but see that one person is different and this person is supposed to be the bad guy. Of course, you ignore that Rey Mysterio also embraces his culture as a Mexican born in California, but is not a heel. Same thing with Dominic. Also, you know, Mexican born in the United States is also not a heel. Um, of course, you have to ignore that. You have to, you know, you have to ignore those kinds of things. You have to ignore Damian Priest being pushed currently as a Puerto Rican. He is not a heel. All right. You have to, you have to ignore that. They picked Drew McIntyre because Drew McIntyre most recently um, was the white man who quote unquote embraced his culture as a baby face. Of course, they forget all these years of Seamus being a uh, Celtic warrior heel or Finley also being a sort of uh, Irish I like to fight, even walked around with a leprechaun. Ah, nobody said that was racist. Um, of course, we can go way, way, way back. You know, we can talk about Nikolai Volkov. We could talk about all the various heel Germans. I mean, I've done videos on stuff like this. We could talk about the Usos when they used to do their, their whole tribal dance and they were baby faces. We could talk about, you know, uh, it's, we could talk about Eddie Guerrero, you know, the whole a Mexican lie, cheat, and steal. He was a baby face. I mean, we can do this stuff all day. We can even talk about Jack Swagger, the all-American American as a heel, and then the real American, also a heel. We can also talk about Cesaro, the man who speaks five languages, the white man, Swiss, also a heel, European. Uh, William Regal, uh, the British blue blood, also a heel. I mean, we could talk about this stuff all day, but it doesn't do him any good. It doesn't do you any good to talk about the, let's, let's look at these things. Because ultimately, the one thing that sticks usually with these characters, now with the Irish characters, it's not really there. Because um, the Irish characters, they're playing mostly off stereotypes. That they're kind of drunken fighters. You know, the Irish are honorary and they like to fight. That's literally Seamus, literally Fenley, right? But when you talk about 
uh, with the Scottish when Drew McIntyre was the Scottish psychopath, it was the same thing. He likes to headbutt people and he likes to fight. Very generic uh, Scottish character. That, but like I said before, the secret ingredient to Jinder Mahal, Santos Escobar, Roman Reigns, and Apollo Crews is elitism. These are arrogant characters. This is something that it has nothing to do with them being specifically any foreign-born character. They could at least they could be anything and be an elitist character and still be a heel. What makes this thing work is the fact that they are taking on uh, characteristics that are of let's say royalty or high culture. You know, when you talk about Alberto Del Rio, you know, he's supposed to be like a man of class. You know, a man who was born of Mexican royalty, the Mexican aristocrat. People hate aristocrats, no matter what race they are, what gender they are, and where they come from. No one cares. People don't like those types of people. You know, it's just the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Same concept, right? You, you have aristocratic, you know, white guy, he's a heel. You have aristocratic brown guy, he's a heel. Okay, so they're the same, right? Now... As far as we can tell, uh, Apollo Crews literally has, has not even been a heel a week and a half yet. And people are already trying to say, oh, well, look at, you know, he's a he's a bad guy or whatever. Like we can go through that all day. There's also been the flip side. I've seen people say, oh, well, you have Santos Escobar, who is on TV as a as a Mexican heel. And um, but WWE would never have an enmascarado luchador who is a rudo otherwise known as a heel in Mexico. That WWE would never have a masked heel. In, in, uh, and that's racism because Vince McMahon doesn't believe that heels can be Mexican and masked. It's ridiculous, right? It is literally ridiculous. But this concept, of course, like I said, is mostly white people. So let's go to the, the response of Nigerians to um, Apollo Crews. This is from Apollo Crews' Twitter account. Somebody says, finally, we have one. Ghana can no longer rub Kofi Kingston in our faces. <laughs> it says, somebody says, really, you are really Nigerian. What state are you from? And, you know, Terry Crews, you'll get your name from Terry Crews, who is also Nigerian. And then somebody says, he's a Tiz man from the Benue state in Nigeria. Then somebody else says, Anthony Joshua, Kamaru Usman, Israel Adesanya, and now Sezuga Uha. I can say as Nigerians like to fight, you would be amazed at the number of Nigerians that have your back. And then someone else responded, even Big Amas hopefully will ditch AJ and align himself with fellow Nigerian. And says, somebody says, maybe Daba Kato as well. And so someone else says, Apollo, when I saw your green, your, your, you appear in Nigeria's green and white, I know this was the new Apollo Crews and your performance was evident as you defeated your opponent. I am a Nigerian watching you on SmackDown from Lagos, Nigeria. Please keep the Nigerian spirit of your grandfather alive. And then someone else says, tell him, King. He says, somebody says, it's time to stop to drop the Apollo Crews name. Uha Nation is born. And then uh, there's just so many people, you know, embrace yourself. I bet you have awoken a lot of Nigerian proud fans today. Always been a fan. And then some people are talking about how, you know, WWE is going to make him dress like, uh, um, <laughs> dress silly. I, I did mention that in my video, too, that hopefully he will not have to dress like a, you know, stereotypical African. And somebody says that's not Tiv attire. It says, uh, I'm very happy to see Apollo get a chance to shine, but I wish delving into your hair can still didn't equate to being a villain. Saying, quote, I am an African-American being followed by booze just feels tone deaf. Let's get past this tired trope. I think this is what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about people who are apparently just so sensitive that they they, they think that this is the, the goal, that just being saying that you're not American means you get booed because they have, I mean, we can, again, we can go through the list. Shinsuke Nakamura is not a heel. It's not a, it's not a heel. And he's Japanese. He was a baby face when he debuted. And was a Japanese babyface. I mean, Asuka was also a Japanese babyface. I mean, these when they and when they turned heel, I did see this when Asuka and Kyrie Sane turned heel at the Kabuki Warriors. People were saying, like, "Oh, they're just generic foreign heels." It's like I didn't see not one Japanese flag. It's like there's a difference between being a nationalist, where you're you know walking around with the flag, or you're talking about your country like you know Jinder Mahal does, or something like that. That's one thing where you're using your flag to get heat. That's one thing. But when you're talking about 
me personally being the son of famous Mexican professional wrestler Fantasma, and therefore I am better than you and I represent Lucha culture and it is my culture, that is completely different. That is you taking ownership of a culture that belongs to not just your people, yet quote unquote, meaning your family, but to all of the Mexicans in general. That's the, the character of Santos Escobar, you know? It is not just, well, I'm Mexican. Boo, you're Mexican. How dare you be Mexican on my TV? That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is <clears throat> Apollo Crews hit a man in the back with a, <laughs> with a pair of stairs. <laughs> he crushed a guy's spine with some stairs. I think that's why people are booing him, right? And it doesn't matter where he comes from at that point. Um, but this is what we're, this is what we're dealing with. You know, we're dealing with people who don't understand how this makes sense. You know, the guy was a heel the week before he quote unquote embraced his culture. He got, he turned heel because a guy disrespected him. Right. And now he's saying that, you know, you can't disrespect me because this is where I come from and I'm not going to let you disrespect me because again, same Instance of Roman Reigns, the same instance of Santos Escobar disrespecting me is to disrespect my culture, disrespect my people, yada, yada, yada. But really, he's just talking about himself. He's using his people as a shield to say, to pretend himself from being, uh, from being, from criticism. So these are the kinds of things that we're talking about here, you know, and we see that there's a lot of people who are of African descent, not even people who are just Nigerian, but people who are also from other parts of Africa are pretty excited about this character. Now, there are some who are probably, you know, woke and they are offended. You know, I don't see why you would be offended. <laughs> you know, I don't see why you would be offended, but it is what it is. And it's a shame that, you know, just existing, and I, I'm about to sound like real woke saying this, but just existing as a man of color in WWE and being anything other than a plain baby face means that it's racism. I mean, anything can be, again, there's literally some guy found a brown corn pop on a box of corn pops and said, oh, he was, this is racist because like there were corn pops doing different things like shopping and shit like that. They were like cartoons. And one of them was a lighter, darker shade of yellow than the others. So he became, quote unquote, the black one. And of course, when he became the black one, they saw that he was the janitor and all of a sudden corn pops was racist. So you can really find about racism and anything if you want to. But we see that there is a lot of people who are extra excited. You know, this is, it is a tearing, it is a sheared uh, institution that we have here where the first thing people think of is race relations and how this is, can, how you can be, how can you be a heel and be Nigerian? It's like he could have been, he was also, he was Nigerian when he was a baby face too. You know, he never not embraced his culture. That's the thing. What he was talking about was that he is of a higher status than other people. You know, like the whole concept of embracing your culture is kind of ridiculous anyway, because how do you, it's not like they rejected their culture when they weren't, you know, like it wasn't. Before Drew McIntyre put on a kilt, was he less Scottish when he was being introduced as being from Scotland? <laughs> you know, like, was he less, like, is Finn Balor more or less Irish right now? You know, when he's being introduced from being from Ireland, does he need to literally walk around with an Irish flag in order to embrace being Irish? No, it doesn't make any sense. But this is how people, this is how people think, you know, and it's unfortunate. Um, and we have we have this problem now there's people who out there who now who are saying that well apollo cruz isn't even nigerian you know he's he's putting on a character just like when kofi was jamaican those are the funniest ones to me you know then the real racism of course comes from the people who are talking about oh uh this is the guy behind the nigerian prince email scams that's real racism you know when you come out and say that you're Nigerian. All of a sudden, you're the you're the Nigerian prince who is trying to scam people via email, you know. But a lot of these are also progressive wrestling fans. So we we're dealing with people out here who are not in the uh, in an interesting 
state of mind. They're boring. You know, these are these are very boring arguments. These are very boring people. You know, this is what you think of when you see somebody doing something different. Instead of evaluating what they're doing, you're saying, oh, well, he's African and a heel. Therefore, he's a heel because he's African. Therefore, it's racism. Instead of saying, hey, he hit a guy in the back of the head with some steps. It wouldn't matter if he put on a Tron helmet. He's going to get booed. He hit some guy that we like. Who also comes from, I think uh, Big E even comes from like um, a Caribbean country. I think he might be Jamaican or something like that. Let me look that up while, we, while we're talking about this. But ultimately, when you're not looking at things, you know, specifically, you're looking at things from the perspective of how we can, how we can, yeah, Big E is Jamaican. He's half Jamaican, half Monteserrat. So he's a Caribbean. So. We're dealing, and he's a son of immigrants as well. So we're talking about here the the families of two immigrants that's going to be fighting. You know, of course, you know, when Big E was on TV as Big E Langston, he had the, the colors, the Jamaican colors, which I noticed from the very beginning, but they never really talked about him being Jamaican. And of course, we know Kofi Kingston was introduced as a Jamaican, but he is <laughs> not Jamaican. So, but these people are very boring. You know, like this is a very boring milk toast argument. I hate to have to deal with this stuff. And usually I would want to, you know, ignore it. But when I saw the, the positivity from the Nigerian fans, I said, you know what? It's a good opportunity to look at things from, from both ways. Really the downfall of this whole representation shit is that it usually cuts both ways. You want representation. You want to see yourself on TV, all these sorts of things. But then you want to complain when you quote unquote see yourself and it's not the way that you want to be seen because you as an individual don't represent that. You as an individual don't understand that you as an individual are not that. Well then stop letting making characters that represent you represent yourself. And that's really what Apollo Cruz is doing. He's not representing Nigeria. He's representing himself and his family. His family comes from Nigeria. So there's going to be some Nigerian in his character. Why wouldn't it be? It's it probably likely in his everyday life. That's another thing that we talk about here. Because people always say, why is wrestlers always got to come up with silly characters? Why can't they just be themselves? And it's like this guy is being himself. And when he bees himself and he turns heel, all of a sudden, he's a bad guy Nigerian. It's racist. So that means that all the years of Apollo Crews being boring, milk toast, nothing babyface. That's what he really should what he should have been. Because the moment he tries to tap into who he really is and turns heel, oh well, he's he's only a heel because he's Nigerian. And that's not the case at all. Then also people got you got people cherry picking which people are heels based off their culture and which people are babyfaces based off their culture, and completely ignoring when other people are not the same way. Again, you've got you literally on the same show had Dominic and Rey Mysterio. Literally. Rey Mysterio literally has Mexican tattooed on his stomach. Literally. You literally have Bad Bunny and Damian Priest on Raw. One of the biggest talking points in the entire 2021 calendar year thus far is the introduction of Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Both of whom speak Spanish. Neither one of them are white. Neither one of them are heels. So... You have these people who want to push this representation shit and then complain about it when they get it. Then you have people who want to, you know, cherry pick that, oh, okay, so Drew McIntyre gets to be a baby face, but Apollo Crews doesn't get to be a baby face in a Nigerian. He hit a guy with some stairs. That's what makes him the heel, not the fact that he's Nigerian. If you could think for just just a couple of shades below the the the, the, the crust couple of shades below the the layer of idiocy that you have that you show on Twitter. Just think about things. Just a little bit. You will see that these things have nothing to do with them being heels. It has everything to do their nationality does not matter. What matters is their attitude. What matters is the, how they present themselves. What matters is the elitism. The, the over the top, the I'm the tribal chief, the head of the table. That's what makes him a heel. I ain't never heard anybody say, I'm the tribal chief, I'm the head of the table, I'm the most important person, I'm the son, yada, 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 and be a babyface. Babyfaces don't talk like that, right? I never heard anybody say, like, I'm all about wealth and power and dominance and be a babyface. Nobody's ever done that. WWE has never had a good guy that was rich. 
Never. They always be heels. They always heels. And then if you want to go back in history, it's not even just the colored guys, quote unquote. You have, you know, throughout wrestling history, you have the fabulous Freebirds. They were feuding with other white guys and were heels because they represented a different Southern culture than the other white guys they were fighting. Texas versus Georgia. I talked about this. You know, I'm going to put that video about foreign heels. I'm going to put that in the description. But people who have been on this channel for a long time, I have to reiterate, this is why we cannot have nice things. This is why we cannot have foreign heels. This is why we cannot have what the, what the, what the business was built upon. And that is using different nationalities in different ways. Sure, he's a heel today. But this time next year, Apollo Crews may be one of the biggest baby faces in the business. I don't know. Right? We don't know. Give it a chance. Give it some, give it some time to fucking breathe. Let it breathe. But you're bullshitting. You're full of shit. Saying, oh, well, a guy represents them. And it's, and, it's, and it's what makes it so upsetting is that it's a site like Cage Side Seats, which a lot of people go to, you know, and it gets a lot of response. It's a really big uh, situation. It's not like some small guy who, you know, some nobody on Twitter. You know, so Cage Side Seats has a pretty sizable audience that they tweet this bullshit out to. You know, so even if people didn't recognize it, when they see it, they're like, oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, next to every time a black guy turns heel or something, he or uh, a brown guy, it's because he's embracing his culture, which is different from being white. It's like, what about all the guys who embraced their culture and wasn't white? What about Alberto Del Rio when he's been when he's being pushed as the American dream about being the immigrant, the guy who comes here and works hard and busts his ass? He was the baby face in that storyline. But you have to look beyond the fucking layer. Have to get over yourself. Look beyond the length of your own nose. But it's impossible for wrestling fans to do that because, to be quite honest, a lot of wrestling fans are indeed the low, low IQ. <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. You know, a lot of them are stupid. They think that they're smart, but they're not. All you have to do is look beyond the crust. And I see that people trying to put together trends and patterns and stuff like that. I get it. You know, sometimes when you're doing basic uh, analysis, that is what you do. You look at the trends and patterns and stuff like that. But you have to go a little bit deeper. Go into the psychology of it. Remember the reason the guy turned heel in the first place. I mean, it was literally just a week ago. He literally got into an argument where a dude told him to go back to catering. And then he smashed him in the back of the head with some steps. That's why he's a heel. Him being Nigerian is just adding another layer to the character. Really, the character, the guy turned heel because he was disrespected by a guy who th he thought was his friend. That's the reason why he's a heel. And if people are not going to be smart enough or to think deeper on this level, that's a shame because you do a disservice to people who have these wide audiences. I don't even have these audiences. Well, at least not yet. One day I may. One day I might. But you have to be able to think about these things deeper. And especially if you're going to be a cultural critic, then how about looking at the actual, the entire context of things and looking at all this stuff? I mean, when you have these arguments that people just want to make, it is what it is, though. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to stop re repeating myself. It is what it is. Right. I said what I had to say. You could have put a Tron helmet on Apollo Crews. He still would have been a heel. Wouldn't have mattered. Him wearing the Nigerian scarf, which is, you know, the kente cloth or whatever. I guess that's what they're going to call it. Then ultimately had nothing to do with it. He gets booed because he attacked Big E from behind with some stairs. That's why he's a heel. Okay. That's it. There really is. Everything else is just a layer on top of that. It's adding layers to the character. That's all they're doing. They're not saying he's not utilizing the Nigerian flag to get heat. Right. So he's not a nationalist. There's a difference between nationalism and individualism, et cetera, et cetera. Just because somebody is different does not mean that they cannot be a heel. It does not mean that they are a heel because they're different in one way. They can be different in multiple ways. There are multiple different diverse personalities on SmackDown. Not all of them are heels. If that's the way you see the business that you have to be a baby face or, you know, being an ethnic baby face or whatever. There's plenty of ethnic baby faces on SmackDown. 
But it's it's ridiculous. But I'm, I'm going in circles. All right, man. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.